Moses. Because in the time of Christ, the people that were at the seat of Moses were in the hardest rebellion ever. And so no one can claim that having the seat of Moses makes them Moses. You can't do that. What gives the authority of Moses? And here it is. Many are tempted in regard to our work, talking of the spirit of prophecy. Many are tempted in regard to our work and are calling it into question. Some in, in their tempted condition charge the difficulties and perplexities of the people of God to the testimonies of reproof that we have given them. Is there some similarities here? All the difficulties that we have is because of the spirit of prophecy. They think the trouble is with the ones who bear the message of warning. Who point out the sins of the people and correct their errors. Many are deceived by the adversary of souls. They think that they that the labours of brother and sister White would be acceptable if they were not continually condemning wrong and reproving sin. I was shown that God has laid this work upon us. God did that. God selected his messenger. The testimony of Jesus. Jesus is our Moses and he is speaking. He is speaking what the Father says. God. I don't say my own thing. What I hear, I say it, as Moses did. And then our Moses, Jesus, gives it to a testimony to the prophet, Ellen G. White. And that is what people rebel against. That you would put out a testimony and read it, and they don't listen. And then you'd perhaps pull another one, a clearer one out, and read it, and they don't listen. And then you might pull another one out and read it and they don't listen. Who are they not listening to? Moses. That's who they're not listening to. The word of the Lord. And so this is where people walk away from light thinking they have greater light. Rebellion of heart. And just to conclude, there is... Another three brief points I'd like to bring out in how you can be rebellious in heart. And that is to presume that you have light already. The scripture says in Matthew 6.23, it says, If the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if that light be darkness, how great is that darkness? Where you think that the light that you have... Or the darkness you have is actually light. That is, that is the worst darkness you can ever have. To think that I know already. To think that I don't need reproof. I already have light. I don't need any more improvement on what I know. I don't need any person to give me any testimonies. Because you could say, well, if you're a leader, you could say, well, I'm the leader. Why do you have to give me a testimony? How great is that darkness? And then there is another one where you have a light and you hide it under a bushel. Does a man light a candle and then put it under his bed? Or does he put it on a candlestick that everyone may see around it? How many of us are ashamed of the straight testimony, the straight way of living? And we think, hey, I can do it when everyone's around, but as soon as I go into the world, I have to hide my light I'm a little ashamed of it I'm a little embarrassed by it because people will scoff at me and people will ridicule me and people will call me the filth of the earth I'd rather hide it under the bed so you get up in the morning you have your devotion and you slide it under the bed and you don't do what God says you, you love God, you want to read his word and have the devotion but you leave it in your room. You don't take it out so everyone else can see what you've learnt. By your actions, by the living testimony. 
This is a form of rebellion, according to Matthew chapter 5. You can read that parable there, the, the example of the light and the candle. And then the last one is, you may be loving the light, but you keep fellowshipping with darkness. You keep being with all the dark people because you seem to like them more than all the people in the light. And have you ever had that? The people that aren't in the church seem to be better friends than the people in the church. And you have this fellowship with darkness. This is a rebellion of light also. And that's what the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5. To have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Ephesians 5 verse 11. It says don't have fellowship with them. With these darkness. And then it says rather reprove them. Not just don't have fellowship with them, reprove them. And how do you reprove? By letting your light shine. That's all. You don't have to go and start preaching to everybody you meet and poking them with a stick. You allow the light to penetrate the darkness. And darkness doesn't like the light. And if it's true darkness, if it's truly rebellious and doesn't want to come to the light, it will leave you. But if it likes it, it will say, wow, what do you do that for? And then you can answer. And so what fellowship does darkness have with light? What communion with God, with Belial, with righteousness and unrighteousness? There is no fellowship. We are a family here. We should press together, press together, press together. We don't have to go outside to look for friendships. We have our friends here. Make friends of God's people. Choose the best company and dwell with that. Because as you dwell with the best company, you'll become better for it. And so to close, what do we do? 2 Corinthians 6.14 2 Corinthians 6. 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath the belie- he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Touch not the unclean thing. Brothers and sisters, is our flesh unclean? Don't play around with your flesh. Don't play around with your feelings. Separate yourself from your feelings and emotions. And hear the word of the Lord. Separate yourself. There is no union between your mind and your flesh. Don't. We often think, oh, you're a sinner. I can't talk with you. Sin is is more in just as much in our flesh as in them. And to be a hypocrite is to not talk to them and then love our opinion and our feeling. It says, touch not the unclean thing. You don't have to touch their flesh in the way of indulging in what their flesh likes and don't do it in yours, but reach out for the soul. And if you touch their mind and God cleans that mind, their mind is not dirty if Christ Christ has cleaned it. We don't call that which is unclean the thing that God has cleaned. And so if there is a person who has conviction, is that not the beginning of conversion? Is that not worthy to then touch and minister to that person Uh, Do they have a clean part on them? Indeed they do. A convicted soul. Minister to them. But the flesh do not touch. So may the Lord help us to come out and be separate from ourselves. Amen.